Hi, thanks a lot, Kristen. Well, September is Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month, usually referred to as AFib. It's the most common form of heart rhythm disorder, but many don't even realize they have it. So this morning, cardiologist Dr. Hong joins Kelsey live here in the studio to take a look at what the effects are. All right, thanks so much, Chris. That's right, cardiologist Dr. Hung with the Cardiovascular Institute of Northwest Florida live this morning to tell us sort of, you know, what AFib is and the risks and the symptoms and really just want to educate our viewers on this disorder. So good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey, for inviting me. Uh, atrial fibrillation is such an important topic that patients need to be aware of and to be treated appropriately. So kind of uh, tell us, yeah, what, what does that mean to have AFib? So there are four chambers of the heart, uh, two top chambers we call atria, at the bottom we call ventricle. Atrial fibrillation is a condition where the atria quivering instead of pump effectively. And then it, it can trigger the ventricle pump really fast and irregular. And it can cause some symptom, for example, palpitation, raising heartbeat, short of breath, difficult uh, breathing with exertion, reduced exercise endurance, chest pain, and in some instance, patient present with the stroke. Wow. So that's very important to be aware. If you have, a, if the patient have any of those symptoms, they need to see the family doctor and refer to the cardiologist as soon as possible. Just to kind of get that checked out and, and, and see if there's something wrong or even rule out this condition, right? Exactly. But you know, some people, they might not even realize, right, that, that they have this condition. In some patients, they don't even aware of it. So then they present with stroke and we have to put a long-term monitor on and some patients, it take three months, six months, then we detect the atrial fibrillation because atrial fibrillation can create a blood clot and when it travel out to the brain, it can cause stroke. Wow. So it's very important to right. know. Right, right, to kind of recognize those signs and get that intervention in time. And there are treatment options. Talk about those a little bit. Well, so atrial fibrillation, because it not cause, because it not pump blood out to the vessel effectively, then it can create a clot. So number one, we need to prevent stroke. We can use the anticoagulation to prevent uh, blood clot, either with Coumadin in the pre own day, now we can use Eliquis, Serauto, or Padaxa. And there's another option for those patients that have a high bleeding risk that we can use the Watchman device. We mean the little device we implant into the left atrial appendage. And after that, patient just use the aspirin rather than anticoagulation. And the video that we're seeing now? That is the, another option is to prevent the AFib occur from begin with. So we can use medication or we can use the ablation so that video there show the ablation procedure, okay. which we offer at uh, Ascension Sacred Heart Bay. And minimally invasive as well. It's minimum invasive, yeah. yes. We uh, introduce the catheter from the groin. We track all the way up to the heart, and we go to the left atrium, where the, most of the time the atrial fibrillation occur, and we create the control barrier so the AFib cannot spread out freely to the rest of the heart. Just amazing what, how long, how far we've come in, in medicine, you know, which is incredible. Well, I really appreciate you joining us this morning. We're going to have this all online as well. Uh, more of what Dr. Hong had to say and just to know those signs and symptoms to make sure uh, intervention is put in place. So because we don't want people to get super sick and stroke is just a terrible exactly. thing to experience for sure. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.